Tell me something I don't know about the scrolls that led. Um, they're here. Who's here? All of us. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you're, you're telling me there's a million scrolls walking amongst us right now? Have you lost your reptilian ass mind? I sent out the call. And every scroll that isn't in Emperor George's colony, and they answered. You lied to me! Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Rob. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Secret Invasion Season 1, Episode 2, called Promises. Now, we say spoilerful because a lot of people get upset when we spoil the podcast, but you're forewarned, so you're already aware of it. So the synopsis, Steve, what's the synopsis for this particular episode? I know it's kind of short. Yes, yeah, short and sweet, simple. Fury grapples with past and present. Yeah. Which, In more ways than one, they should have Yeah, <laughs> we, we do get a lot of fl- flashbacks in this regarding Captain Marvel, the movie itself. Plus, we get scenes that we never got before about Fury and incorporating the scrolls into the world or Earth mm-hmm. at a certain point, but as him being in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. at that time. So it's pretty interesting because they they kind of start us off with that. And then we move into present day and we uh, move on to what we know, what, what is going on now. So initial thoughts about this. Uh, we'll start with Rob. What, what was your initial thoughts? Actually, can you, Steve, can you go first? Sure. I, uh, you know, I, I, I love last episode. I, I, I enjoyed this one. My initial thoughts, and we'll go into some detail on this. Yeah. There was a lot of violence. There was a. Uh, more intense what i would think of as violent than what i'm surprised disney let go and i'll elaborate more, more adult on that themed in those later definitely. yeah yeah that was one thing that really surprised me was it seemed there was a little bit more yeah just more more of that uh, violence we saw some drinking i don't know if we saw a lot of drinking in other disney these disney shows and cutting you know? of limbs well yeah and that's what i was going to get to in my points <laughs> yeah it, is what surprised me and some of the adult uh, language too, regarding certain things as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I uh, honestly I enjoyed the episode. It kind of gave light to a lot of what's going on that we didn't know before. A lot about Talos. We found a little bit more about the scrolls. Mm-hmm. We find out what has been going on. Apparently, they've been here really long, and there's more of them. They're more involved from what we know more so than what Nick Fury actually knew as well. And yeah. uh, it, it, we basically Fury finds out more of this is going to be a huge takeover. And that's what worries him. But the way a, a round of how he learns about it is kind of interesting in that train ride. And we'll get into that when we uh, we talk further. Mm-hmm. We're discussing that particular scene because I found it really revealing and interesting because it revealed a lot about Talos. It revealed a little bit more about Fury. And also, we learned more about who in government are there and who are real and who are not. And we still don't know who is a scroll or not a scroll. So I really I enjoyed it. Uh, like, I, like you said, it was very adult oriented. And I enjoyed that aspect because it shows that Disney Marvel has been utilizing that adult <laughs> key lock that they have on their app. So we could actually, you know, watch these shows as adults and not everything is really meant for kids. They could water it down easily for a PG 13, but this was a little bit more adult oriented, uh, very similar to almost like with Falcon and the winter soldier itself too. When we, when we covered that. So it seems like they are not, playing it as this is kid friendly all the time and we already saw that too at guardians of the galaxy as well (laughs) yeah i thought the uh you know just like we just like i told you on the first one i said well we just gotta wait to see what's going on and the one thing i wanted to see if you know the the further development of nick fury and what's been going on with him and it's Mm -hmm. funny because when you and i discussed that 
Yeah. The next episode, that's exactly what Talos was telling Nick Fury. It's like, you know, all of a sudden you disappeared. You know, what happened to you and all these things? And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what we want to find out. And again, it's not going to follow the comic book, you know, version the way no. uh, we we talked about. But it is going to it. It's interesting. Like I said, I'm sure it's going to. I, I predicted that I think in the uh, in the last episode was like we're going to see, you know, how many people are being uh, replaced in power, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, we pretty much know that it's a uh, it's a big group of people that, you know, that are really uh, high up in a, in the hierarchy of government. But the biggest surprise to me was there's a million scrolls <laughs> in the entire Marvel Universe that's on Earth. And I was mm -hmm. like, holy crap. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, that's that even Nick Fury had that look on his face like say what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so that's why it's it's going to be interesting seeing these next, you know, four episodes cuz it's only six episodes, but the, mm -hmm. seeing these next four episodes just to see what's going to happen in in that storyline and how they're maybe they're trying to retcon a lot of things that, you know, have happened, who knows? You know, Maria Hill not being back, uh, of course, because, you know, she's dead. Although somebody pointed out to me that on the Marvel on the Marvel's um, trailer. Yeah, she does make an appearance. <laughs> yeah. Rob and I were talking up at fourth, too. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about they, they, they also showed Nick Fury with his non beard and eye patch. I think there's going to be flashbacks in yeah, the Marvel. I don't I don't think those are going to be present day versions yeah steve um, and i were talk having like a little discussion about that because you know things could be out of sequence when it comes to the mcu itself too right and honestly i think the marvels was probably supposed to be out before this movie came out because there was so many setbacks so right it, it's probably yeah. why or it's like oh we're gonna get this in backstory to some degree so they might have to edit what they're doing within these episodes so mm -hmm. yeah no, absolutely right. But uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I think we're on the, on the same page as far as what we overall thought and we liked as far as like overall experience. But as far as uh, highlights or our, our tops that were regarding this particular episode, uh, I think we could go the out of sequence because it is spoilerful. But I'm sure we each have our own individual, or we could just write off somebody else's thought because we had the same thought and we could have a conversation of this so right. uh steve what would be your first point that you liked or found interesting within a specific scene we were already kind of discussing it so with me it was the the whole it, it's been 28 years since fury made them this promise right we saw it in 1995 they arrived 1997 yes. he makes this promise that he and carol danvers are going to find them a home and then of course you know uh, how many years went by and then there was the blip so you have like 20 years or so and there was the blip and now we're a few years after the blip and there's a million of them here and i was a little what bothered me on the second watch hearing that number was how did they all get here without being detected you know and you know rody says well 12 or 15 years ago i was on an i there was a a few light ships arrived with the scrolls okay that that's not a million people though so mm -hmm. how did they get here without being detected? Who, you know, how much time did they learn to blend in, you know, and especially those ones that have risen to, I mean, heck, one of them is what the, the, the chancellor, what do they call the prime minister? She's yeah, the UK right. prime minister is yeah. a scroll. Correct. The, the leader of NATO, the secretary general is a scroll. Mm -hmm. How long have they been? It's, it's a lot of questions and I don't, that's what it just really uh, and I thought it was it was funny. Like you said, Fury gets so mad. He throws Talos out of the train. He's like, I think this is your stop. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> so what are you going to do about the Russians roaming the train looking for you? And obviously, he's a spy, so he knows how to sneak around. But yeah, right. Yeah. That was my thing. The million scrolls and where are they all hiding? Part, yeah, I'll, I, that was one of my uh, favorite part the reveal of that. And that was part of uh, Fury's little it, it was his kind of story of how him and his mother came to telling the truth to one another and saying what don't i know mm -hmm. because of his little uh soiree with little susie in the back of old man jackson's barn and they're playing doctor and they found a polka dotted frog and <laughs> she saw through that lie and he goes <laughs> what don't i know 
And, right. you know, of course, we get the long convoluted story about trains and how, you know, the colored people had to be in the back of the train and they had to sneak their food on and they had to have their biscuits, their uh, fried chicken and all that good stuff. And they weren't allowed into the food car, which is a nice uh, experience to show how old Fury is. A lot of people don't realize that about Nick Fury and how old he is within the MCU. So mm -hmm. it's kind right. of enlightening for certain people. But that's when Telos tells him about the million people. But it's also giving, too, because with Talos explaining that, there is an emperor. And apparently it was the few, that million that were left, that left the particular uh, emperor. Drogus or Drog Drogus uh, from Scrollos. So they're still out there. Those scrolls are still out there. They didn't abandon wherever they are. They could still be on Scrollos. They could still be on, you know, they, they could be on another planet in the Milky Way for all we know, but there are still more scrolls out there. And uh, that's something that Fury didn't know. We didn't know that uh, apparently there are far more of them out there, but the million that we know of are on earth. And we are, like you said, Steve, we're infiltrated because the UK prime minister, Pamela Lawton is one of them. And she blatantly had that green necklace right in front of Rhodey during that whole little presentation and him contesting everything about fury and everything else. So that's kind of a dead giveaway. It's like just throwing it in our faces. Like, yeah, we're scrolls. <laughs> and then we got FXN pundit Chris Stearns, played by Christopher McDonald, or you all remember him as Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore. <laughs> and uh, he was there. So we know somebody's in media to actually invoke that kind of like how a lot of people felt about NBC and how they kind of threw false media. So it's kind of like a, a commentary on society of what we have today. Right. And, that, and then we have uh, NATO Secretary General Caspani, and, you know, we know he's involved, but, you know, he's in charge of all these weapons and everything else that the world is. So basically, we are at the mercy of these people, whether it be media, military or government. So mm -hmm. it's like blatant right there, those three aspects. And I like how. The conversation and this kind of segues into what my my thought was and my what I, I found interesting was with Rhodey and him firing Fury based upon what the president has says, because the, the government is in charge of shield or saber at this point. And mm -hmm. they're basically telling him you're relieved of your duties. But this the way Rhodey was talking was more of like a politician himself, which leads me to believe is this Rhodey. If he's a scroll, how long has he been a scroll? Has it been? Yeah, you know, he, he had to have been, it had to have been honestly after, I think, uh, Endgame or maybe a little bit before. But he would have still had a, I, I have a hard time believing it was before Endgame for the fact that I have a, the reason why I say this is just the way he was. And how he acted amongst everybody during that fight. So I can't see it being a scroll that was more involved. They, mm -hmm. He wouldn't have that relationship with Tony or anybody like that. Well, remember that. Um, so a million scrolls. And so, how, I mean, how what was the length of time from the uh, Miss Marvel movie till now? 28 years. like uh, 28 years. So yeah. we're looking at 28 years of characters that... You know, probably has it, it probably has taken those 28 years to really bring in a million scrolls over here. time and over time. Correct. Yeah. And so the question is, OK, so is Rhodey a scroll? Right. So let's say if he is, mm -hmm. could he have been in an endgame? Could it could a lot of these scrolls have been affected during the blip or the snap that, you know, what we I call would say snap? so. Yeah, right. I would say so, affected. too. Correct. So. If that happened, keep in mind that uh, the scrolls have been around for so long that they would have 
what I would say, you know, um, develop friendships with people. And you just probably wouldn't be able to tell because they do, what is it? They do the little mind meld thing where. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Right. Where, you know, they, they have the same experiences and the same thoughts as the person that they're emulating. So that shouldn't be hard to do with, you know, Tony Stark. I just, I just don't think I, and I'm going to take the other side of this because I don't, I don't think Rhodey in this in this show is a scroll. I don't, I don't think that, that just, to me, it wouldn't make any sense. They would have to explain to us when he got swapped out. I'm, I'm with you guys. Like, I don't know when would they have had the, the chance to swap him out. I don't see it. I don't, I don't think it is. Um, I, yeah, I just, I don't, I'm, I mean, that could have happened anytime, honestly. Mm. Cause again, if you, if they're going to take over other people's lives then it could happen anytime. At some point, it's just we don't know. Again, we don't know if uh, Rhodey is or is not. Yeah, um, he is oh. acting as a politician, though. That's the whole thing. Remember, I mean, even though he was fighting with the Avengers and everything, now he is, um, you know, up there in the government, and you know, he is pretty much acting as just a politician. A little bit different than where the way the way he was acting in uh in Endgame and uh. Well, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we saw him in there, right. and so I just anyway, I I guess it, it's it'll be revealed. We'll, we'll find out. At some I'm sure yeah. we'll find out. We could, we could say anybody's a scroll. I mean, yeah, exactly. Fury could be a scroll. <laughs> and that's the whole point. I think that's the whole point of this show is that anybody could be a scroll. I mean, for all we know, Nick Fury could be a scroll. Right. <laughs> you like know, I just oh, he said, was yeah. at right. one point because Talos took his part position at one point while he was right. off world. So and then. The reveal the at the end was, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty shocking to me. I yeah, don't know yeah, how yeah. you guys. We, we can yeah. jump that shark right now mm-hmm. and just say, sure. jump to it and say, hey, let, uh, let's talk about it. Well, all right. Uh, remember the end of WandaVision when Monica Rambeau was greeted by somebody at the very end in a hidden warehouse and it was this woman scroll. It was a, it was a. Uh, an African American woman coming right. in, and as representation from Nick Fury, it was the same woman. That's oh, the same woman. It? I didn't. I from didn't. What I can tell, that, I actually so. rewatched the scene. It's the same woman. She looks. Okay. Like, she that looks would make like, sense. Is she, cre- is she in the credits? The same uh, actress. I did not look into that, but I just really rewatched the scene real quick. I didn't look. I okay. didn't deep dive into that, but it looks exactly like that woman. With the hair, how she looked, and how she talked. Right. So, to me, I was like, okay, so, the question is, Nick Fury has been in relations with a scroll all this time. Now, the question is, is, does he know she's a scroll? Or, because the way they acted, he walks into the house, he puts, and he's, he, he, you could see her, she's a scroll, she's cooking. And next thing you know, she goes, uh, she switches back and she tells him, uh, 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 and he has to put on his wedding ring. And, right. Yeah. So and it's, that, and it's interesting you say that because when, she, right, when he was going, when he was coming in, she changed. Yeah. So again, but I mean, but she didn't look like, oh my God, I'm going to get caught or anything like that. It just looked like, hey, natural. It's like, right. as if it was he a just natural wanted thing. her to always to be that look to him. Or she's doing it for him, you know, as a, uh, like as a courtesy. a courtesy or something like that. I don't know. That's that's going to be a, a great question to be answered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was my question because I couldn't remember. Isn't didn't they say something in the first episode about they they need to stay in their human form? Like she made a point to say the warriors in Gravix little group they stay in human form all the time, so they don't get mixed up. Yeah, right. with the, you know, and so the fact that she's changing back and forth means that i don't think she gets mixed up is that if that makes sense she's so, keeping up the persona of the character that she is on earth right and she doesn't but she what i'm saying is she doesn't need to be in her human form when he's not i don't i don't know i, well, I have the same questions i always it. seeing it i i see it like this all right a lot of women like to they, they have to present themselves wear a suit whatever in the business world when they come home, they want to release themselves. They take off their bra and whatever and just be casual. I see it as that way, too. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, okay, she's like, oh, 
And then when he came in, it was back to business. I don't think it's back to business for him, but he's so right. used to seeing her in that respect. And I, we won't know that until a later point, but to me, I, I just kind of like, all right, well, yeah, I have this feeling like either a, he is aware and it kind of focuses in on the first conversation with him and tell tell us in the first episode when how he knows that when a human is lying, but he can't mm-hmm. tell the difference between a scroll is being right. faking it, you know? Right. So it, it kind of borders on that question of a 50, 50. Well, there's a lot of speculations in it with this whole and maybe that's the maybe that's what Disney meant to do Mm -hmm. with this show is to have everybody guessing. Yes. Well, I'm sure putting it in the the way they did is right. Yeah. Yeah. It's meant to be like a cliffhanger, just like in uh, Across the (laughs) (laughs) Spider-Verse. But yeah, there's a lot that's still missing, though, uh, as far as when Talos talks to uh fury when they were doing that whole tell me something i don't know he kind of gives him a gist of the whole kree scroll war in a short two sentences Mm -hmm. right but there there was no explanation of why that war started who is initiative of that particular war why there was so animosity like i said who would start it and what they were looking for Mm -hmm. uh you know it, it I'm I'm not thinking of G.I. Joe and Cobra. It's like they want world domination or whatever. But I, I'm pretty sure somebody did something to somebody. Like the Skrulls could have did something to the Kree. Like looked like one of them to infiltrate. And they did something wrong. And then the Kree retaliated and got to that point where we need to obliterate this race. Because they could look just like us. Right. And then do whatever we need. We still don't have that that history of the Kree scroll war, which kind of spawns of why there are millions of of these scrolls here on earth. And that's a huge question. Now in in the comics, it was always looked at as the scrolls as being the super baddies and the Kree being the good. Right now they've changed it where it's like, okay, the scrolls are trying to do the right thing and they were working with humans but now we're at the other side of the fence where the scrolls are trying to take over like this certain section that are trying to take over the earth and eliminate the human species, which yeah, is, I a, mean, a uh, didn't they mention that they did uh, destroy the um, scrolls? Yeah, I no. think they did. They mentioned some about the like scrolls was destroyed, but the, there was also uh, at the emperor, there was still the emperor Drogus who is still out there with the remaining part of the scrolls. Right. So they didn't truly destroy scrollos, but scroll the people that were like abandoned the million that abandoned them to follow Talos did so. And then the rest stayed with uh, the emperors, meaning that there's a, a faction out there in the universe that, right. That Talos doesn't have control over because who knows what their, their thoughts, but you know, we know Talos is, situation with this he's trying to help fury out but he also you know got caught in that lie of not telling fury that or you know just not telling fury hey there are a million of us here too by the way and there, there's a possibility of takeover and that's well the and now point. we got general gravic is in charge of everybody so dallas is out he doesn't have any more power yeah he was part of that council of that of scrolls that we saw and that who we know between the uh, the prime minister, uh, the F- F- FXN pundit, and uh, the NATO security. Right, but General. that's what I'm saying is now he's out, so he's he's trying to get some sort of power back because, like, he told the one woman who uh, Gravik let leave, he said, "I want to meet with Gravik," you know, yeah. and she said, "Well, Gravik will kill you," so that's why he's like, "I want to meet publicly." So, and now we have this loose cannon of Shirley who's out there, and uh, she wound up interrogating. That one scroll that they had from Gravik. She cut his finger off. <laughs> That's in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an easy way. Hey, think of it. It's not John Carpenter's a thing. They can't just take a little bit of blood and put a hot poker in there to make it and turn out like, oh, you're an alien. Right. <laughs> but I'm, who? So who was that woman? You said you you know who she was. Did I Shirley? did I miss something from the? You keep calling her Shirley. I have no context here. I'm trying uh, to figure out. That was the woman that uh, that Fury had met up in Russia, who was English. The one oh, that kidnapped right. okay. uh, 
the one that the one that had him yeah. kidnapped and okay yeah. now yeah. I'm, now i'm tracking i didn't recognize her so i didn't yeah because she okay. had a, a lot to lose because she plays the whole political and right and gotcha. power now game I've, now so i've caught up she, with where she, she was she that's is. why she wound wound up getting there and then locking and just doing her uh you know ter- <laughs> terrorist activities of interrogation yeah. of cutting the guy's finger off and the guy didn't even realize holy crap you just cut my finger off yeah uh, i'm like oh and then Correct. and then sticking him with a, a a solution that runs it up to 160 degrees centigrade in his body to cook yeah, that him was a, a tough bit. scene to watch yeah, so it, you know that was very hard because you know inter- interrogation tactics right there. But throughout that, it's like Shirley got the information that what she needed at that point. Mm-hmm. But the the coolest part that I liked because it's going to come and it's you know we've already been foreshadowed of this, and Robbie you and I had spoke about this about the last episode right. about the Super Scrolls. So now we got Gaia. During that particular meeting in those offices, now looking at a th- like a 486 computer with a CRT monitor going through and logging in. I'm forgetting the woman's login that, that they use, but they, she was able to log in and look at. Uh, Wasn't it the doctors, Dalton, Rosa Dalton? I, yep, that's it. So they, they looked at her uh, login. She got in that way, was able to see the DNA that they were using to morph these particular candidates of scrolls and and splice their dna so that they could get obtain these powers right. and it, it was wild to see the characters that we got so they they have the dna from the frost beast from thor the dark world mm-hmm. yeah the frost beast it had um extremists groot. yeah i saw groot groot yeah, how'd, get groot? Groot? yeah. how'd they get groot <laughs> they got it from endgame because uh, you know groot Kind oh, of okay. Flakes off or like debris of group right. come oh, off, so okay. they could easily get that extremists. That was from Iron Man three, but well, I feel bad for them because once they create a scroll, they're just going to wind up exploding. So you don't want them exploding in your presence, right? But uh, but you know what? You're right. I think the the whole super scroll thing because I I kind of went back to you know to kind of read up a little bit more on the scrolls, and the scrolls do have the ability to mimic the same powers and abilities as superheroes okay. but the super scrolls were really in the uh in the canon of uh of marvel is really one scroll it was one particular scroll right. that was created actually they they started the scrolls uh, oddly enough very early in the comic lore within fantastic four 2 and that was right. when they had to deal with, I'm not remembering the actual emperor's name from Skrullos, but his name was Androgus. It was something, it was uh, some other name. But that's where we found that. And then he was the one that created the Super Scroll. Now, the mm. Scrolls then were, had like, they had the ability, just like in the show, to mimic people, take on their personalities and whatnot, and then have heavy super strength in comparison to a regular human. Correct. So what they're doing now is they're trying to do what they did in the comic where instead of a super scroll with the Fantastic Four's ability, they have people they could get obtain DNA and then put these other super powered beings, whether it be the Frost Beast, Extremis, Groot, or Cole Obsidian. Right. Mm-hmm. And the way they got Cole Obsidians, uh, it was because his fist got uh his hand got cut off by Wong while defending in Infinity War, while defending Bruce Banner at that point right. with the little okay. whatever circle thing he does. Yeah, so it's it's a good, because when you look at the, say, the trailers for Secret Invasion, mm-hmm. you do see a scroll that all of a sudden he has, like, tentacles that come out, and I have to, and then when I saw the whole Groot thing, I said, that's where he's that's getting where his getting powers. It. Yep, that is. So it's an interesting way on how they're going to have the super scroll. And instead of having the powers, of course, of the fantastic four, mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be, I found it kind of genius. Almost it was like, listen, if we give him ability or we give the super scroll abilities of a character, we will have to then explain, I guess that character, mm-hmm. you know, like let's say, uh, you know, Bruce Banner or something like that, but they did it out of all these, characters that are where cg that really 
I mean, Groot was what, you know, Vin Diesel just saying, I am Groot. Anybody could say that. <laughs> but they made it interesting where it's like, oh, they didn't pick like a super, super, you know, power bean or something like that. Or what I would say, like a like a main character. They, they're they picking all these background characters yeah, to so they could have the powers for that. And, I, and mm-hmm. I'm wondering, you know, maybe that's a way of not acknowledging some of the other MCU properties or whatever it is, but right. Hmm. Yeah. You know, the, it's just some of their choices have been very interesting. Plus we, uh, th- we do get a, a mention about the Avengers by Rhodey talking to uh, fury about, and you know, getting their friends involved right now. How many friends do they really have left? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's not really that many. They are pretty much all off world or doing their own thing. And, Two of which are, you know, like, you know, Steve Rogers is an elderly man. Tony is gone. Thor's off world. Captain Marvel apparently is off world because she's not in the show. Right. right. Hawkeye's not coming back in any way, shape, or form. I, I think this is where they're going to start moving into with the MCU with the uh, with the Young Avengers. I wouldn't be surprised uh, where that comes in, and I wouldn't be put it past them that we get Gaia involved. Right. And they wind up giving Gaia some sort of powers too. Cause apparently in the comic book, Gaia does get obtained some sort of powers through DNA or something. Right. But hmm. uh, if they do, then that will lead her to be part of the young Avengers with uh Hawkeye student. You got Miss Marvel, you got Gaia, you got what's that? Iron heart. And there's one more I'm thinking of. Oh, Ant-Man's daughter. Oh yeah, right. um, yeah, Cassie Lang. Right, what do they call her? Um, stature or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was stature. You're right, stature. Yeah, so it, it's I I wouldn't put it past that, but you know, before that, we're gonna get the Thunderbolts. So that which I think of as like the anti Avengers, kind of right. like an anti hero, because you got Thaddeus Ross in there. You're gonna have oh whatever her name, Allegra. What's a what's a what's a Defontaine. Uh, Defontaine. You can oh, have... I don't know the middle part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she's going to call together these people. So you, you're going to have a variety of different people in that, but they're not your traditional Avengers. So they will come to arms at one point, but whoever they fight, we don't know. But uh, I would see this as like kind of like a starting point, but we're going to be stuck in this mess of government and society at this point with these scrolls and trying to figure out where we stand as humans as well as where the scrolls stand in our society and it's right. kind of that duality of what fury was talking about in the train car and it's like yes yeah. he was he was trying to explain it in the sense of like um segregation where they he was he felt that segregation but they were able to fit in at a certain point and it took time so he was trying to say it to Talos in a way where, you know, but he, then Talos was like, yeah, but you just left and you stuck yourself up on that starship. And I still feel that now that is PTSD. And now he has have even more P- PTSD because of Maria Hill. So, right. I, yeah, and I'm I look forward to see what we get in the next episode, because I'm sure th- we're going to get a little bit few more eye opening Oh, I'm sure. Two yeah. more eye-opening episodes because this is six parts and this is just episode two. Mm-hmm. Correct. And, and the last two will probably be long. Yeah, we got a long ways to go. So, but uh, yeah, that those were my thoughts. That's what I had. Did, did you guys have anything else? Well, you covered um, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've I think we've got everything that I had. We talked about the machine. That's that's my question. You guys answered my question about what the what this machine was. The scrolls are building. That it looks like it's going to be able to combined dna or something so. yeah that's going to probably be for the super scrolls or something like that mm-hmm. i mean my thought on it was more of you know like the little bits that i took out of it especially when fury was talking to uh talos talos there talos, we go yeah. sorry yeah. about that but yeah when he's talking to uh to talos i mean when talos is like well you know you, you, you know humans are so judgmental and he's like yes I mean, we're no. so judgmental. We're so judgmental to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I've got the quote. Yeah. I've actually got the quote here because Talos, Talos believes they can coexist a bit together. And uh, I'm not going to say it the way Fury said it because he says it really loud. And I've already right. been loud on this podcast. But I got the whole quote, or almost the whole quote. Humans okay. can't coexist with each other. 
You've been here long enough to know that, Talos. We've been at war with each other since we could walk upright. There is not enough room or tolerance on this planet for another species. That is, yeah. So I found that to be a very powerful um, quote because there's so much truth to it. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're yeah. if if we if we have so much uh, infighting with ourselves, you know, because of religion, because of you know status in in our society, you know, mm-hmm. our religious beliefs, everything. It just imagine having a completely different species come to right. Earth, and on top of that, a species that can actually morph into anybody else. And you know yeah. how paranoid we are with, oh, you know, the government is listening on us, <laughs> or you know, and all these things. Imagine having a species that can actually now you'll have everybody. It looked like your daddy. <laughs> yeah, you'll have every, yeah, you'll have everybody always paranoid. People just like, oh, you, you know, he could be a scroll. You know, then you go back to that entire um what I would call the the like the the Salem witch trials, right? Where in the Salem witch trials, you didn't have to be a witch. All you had to do was be accused of being a witch and you would mm-hmm. get burned. Correct. Which kind of sucked. Uh, you know, so that's that's what I see here. I see that, hey, even if they integrated them into our society, you're going to have groups, hate groups, and you're going to have all these, you know, laws that, you know, uh, can they morph or they can't morph or maybe they have to be segregated. All these things, mm-hmm. like all of a sudden it brought back all these social commentaries, which is like, wow, <laughs> will they tackle a lot of that in the next four episodes? Or was that just a, hey. We just said it to say here because that to me would be interesting. And we've had a lot of movies out there. Uh, a, one movie that I always enjoyed and they became a series. Uh, you, you guys remember Alien Nation? I was just having the same thought. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just had yeah. the same thought about Alien, Alien Nation. Nation was, I'm not eating. I'm not drinking any soda. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alien <laughs> Nation was the same thing. Having, mm-hmm. a, you know, an alien species come to Earth you know, taking jobs or that's at least how they feel or, you know, but they're not being treated right. All the What's uh, worse is that's 30 years ago and we're still dealing with the same issues. Right. That is yeah. correct. So ima- right. That imagine a completely different alien species coming in. So mm-hmm. that I hope they really do tackle some of that, at least a little bit. I know it's only four episodes left, but that to me was uh, very fascinating. I was like, all right, cool. How are they going to deal with that? And mm-hmm. a million scrolls? I mean, you tell me they had like 10,000 scrolls, which is still a lot. Right. Yeah. But now then I'll be like, all right, you know, but a scattered million over the whole earth. Yeah. yeah a million scrolls. I mean, that's <laughs> as big as, some, you know, certain towns, you know, in a, mm-hmm. or cities in uh, the United States, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. So, yeah, no crazy. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Same here. All, all right. right. I think that was our take on uh, yeah. <laughs> the Secret Invasion Season 1, Episode 2. I had a quote. It's kind of cliched and kind of tropey, but I liked it both times I heard it. I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm in. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is true. Yeah. It's kind of tropey and kind of a, a jokey little lie, but I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Well, the most like uh, uh, adult-oriented line that came out of that was Shirley when she comes in. And they were doing oh, yeah. the interrogation before she gets there. And she, get, the guy's got the sword underneath his arm, and he's ready to continue beating on the guy. And she goes, "You know, if you keep continue to like your mom has <laughs> always said, if you continue to beat your meat like that, you're gonna lose mm-hmm. your eyes." <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, that got what past the, the censors too. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay. All right, I guess we're in that territory, uh, Disney Marvel. It's like you already gave us the f bomb and Guardians, and now we. Well, there's always this. been there's always been those uh those little you know innuendos where, innuendos, right, where yeah. you, you you catch on where you know young the younger audience probably or you know is not going to catch on to that at all, but the older I mean at least there's something there for the older audience to go oh okay. You yeah. know, that's uh, that that was kind of cool. That was, you know, uh, it, it brings a smile to your face, or at least it did to, for me. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we always talk about feedback. We didn't get any feedback. I put it out there. I actually put it on uh, Instagram and Twitter as well. I copied it. I think I did <laughs> as well as the Facebook page, but we didn't get anything. But we'll just move right along into and we'll talk about uh, how to send in your feedback soon. But right now, uh, podcast recommendations are where we could listeners could hear you guys. So, uh, Steve, uh, well, really, 
right here is pretty much you can hear me you can hear my voice on some other some of the other podcasts that i call in my live steves too but uh, this is going to be the biggest place you're going to hear me right here on panels to pixels and rob and me uh you could you know you could find me on fantasy picks movie edition where we normally uh take movies and uh bad movies that were overhyped you know what what I call tentpole movies that didn't make it in the box office or critically. There are a lot of them this year. <laughs> and what we do is we do our own fantasy cast on what can we have done to make it any better. So, and we also do a top five movie draft, depending on actor movies, genres, and things like that once in a while. And hopefully soon we'll be getting into uh, movie composers, at least doing covering one movie composer a month or something like that. Uh, that's probably going to start in uh, in July for music fans out there, or for people who like film music. So, nice. yeah. Cool. And as always, you could hear me here on Panels to Pixels podcast, as usual. You could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast, where we cover everything action, adventure, fantasy, thrilling, suspense, anything that gets your adrenaline going just released and dropped yesterday was the thing from 2011 so jerry and i jerry gomez and i covered that and we had a good time covering that and talking about mary elizabeth winstead the possibility of uh, john carpenter continuing with that saga because he made kind of hints in convention form and uh how the continuity worked out with that prequel in comparison to the original 82 version of so the he's thing. thinking of doing another one yes he kind of made a huge hint at a convention recently by somebody who was established. Is this going to be a like a sequel to the thing or or correct? Okay. That'll be interesting. Yeah, to the one that he had okay. done. So uh, what that entails, I have no clue. But I look forward to whatever he comes up with. But I've heard this before when it came to Escape from Earth. And we never got that particular movie. Oh, I never even so, heard of that. Oh, yes. Well, they, there was a lot of litigation in that. So uh, actually, when we do cover Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. eventually, right. we will discuss those things as well. Coming up next, and it's definitely on the dock, and we're actually ready to record come Monday. Uh, right now we're recording on June 30th. But uh, Jamie Dimmick and Jerry and I are going to be covering Big Trouble in Little China. Nice. So that's another John Carpenter movie that we're going to be covering. Uh, the 2011 version was not by John Carpenter. It was by, done by somebody else. But we'll be covering Big Trouble in Little China. So if you have any thoughts on the movie Big Trouble in Little China, throw us an email at AdrenalineCinemaPodcast at gmail.com. So just send your thoughts and what you thought about that, or you just go to facebook.com forward slash adrenaline cinema podcast and just look for the image and then just put it in the comments below the image for that particular movie and we'll read them. But with that, we'll move right along into how you could send in feedback here, which would be, well, you could easily send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two spelled out to you pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You can write out your thoughts however you want in email, text and format, and we'll read them on the podcast. Uh, if you don't feel like, uh, you know, writing out your thoughts and you want to record yourself, you could do so and just send it as an attachment in the email and then we'll play it live here on the podcast and we'll discuss it. You can easily go to our Facebook group. I already mentioned it. You can, all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels we have a website and i have been neglecting and i've been neglecting this for over a year uh panels to pixels podcast.com still working and we are on twitter at panels to pixels that's at panels and the number two and pixels we are on instagram as well correct yes steve yep. we are on instagram is at panels to pixels podcast all spelled out in words. I know it's super long, but at panels, two pixels podcast. Awesome. And then we are on YouTube as well. All you have to do is search us on YouTube. Just look for search panels to pixels podcast. Don't do the other one. Don't just do panels to pixels. You'll get Josh and we love Josh and he's a great guy and he's put out some great content recently too. So I, I highly recommend you check it out, but check us out there. So if that's your way to listen to us, that's a good way to listen to us, too. It's just literally the podcast 
an image of of from the show or movie that we're covering with the logo of adrenaline uh no panels to pixels on it uh panels to pixels podcast on it or you could watch any uh interviews or anything that we do live when we have that opportunity when it comes because we do on occasion get maybe a celebrity guest here and there you can always look at that and it's our back catalog as well uh we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, P- Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice you use. If there's a rating or review available for those particular apps, please do so. Give us a rating or a review. But the best one that you could actually do would be Apple Podcasts, because apparently everybody knows what <laughs> Apple Podcasts are, because that's where podcasts came from initially. <laughs> but uh, it's the most highly uh, recommended one, and that's what uh, people look at. So... Uh, but that's about it. That that was our episode, and I look forward to what we're going to get next week on Secret Invasion. Uh, next up, we will be recording our review of The Flash from 2023. So look out for that as well, and send some information, uh, like some sort of feedback regarding that. I look forward to actually covering that because uh, there's a lot of things that came up recently about this particular movie, and uh, I, I'm intrigued to talk oh, about Oh, me it. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, that was our podcast. And uh, I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels for Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.